Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning on this God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. Um, churches here, our, not only our church, but churches all around the country, ELCA churches, are celebrating this day as a day of service. Also, a warm welcome to Cecilia and her family, who is here this morning for her baptism. So, welcome, everybody. As it is our first Sunday kind of back um, of our fall season, we are starting from the back this morning. So I'll invite you all to rise and turn and face me um, at the bowl that we have in the back for our Thanksgiving for baptism. But for that, as we're all settling in and excited about all of our projects today, let's we'll take a moment to ground ourselves in worship um, with our centering song. Please note that during the Thanksgiving for baptism, you may feel splashes of water um, as part of your remembrance of baptism, so don't be totally startled here. Let us continue with our call to worship. We are God's children, called to be co-creators with God. Called to love God with all we are. I invite the assembly to rise as you are comfortable and turn and face the font and the cross. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Water. Water, we praise you, O oh God, for water. The heart, the Missouri, the little Missouri, the knife and cannonball rivers, Lakes Patterson and Sakakawea, the rain that nourishes animals and plants, water for drinking and bathing, we praise you, God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for water. We praise you, O oh God, for our water stories a flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. 
We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing at the pool at Bethsaida, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for through this water you have birthed us into the family of Christ and bathed us in forgiveness and enlivened us with the Spirit. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We praise you, O God, for baptism. O God, you are the ocean sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen, amen, and amen. I invite you to join us in singing the processional hymn.
to all those who are joining us. And I'm off. A warm welcome to all those who are joining us online um, or on the radio. Our preacher today is Pastor Lisa Luton, and our assisting minister, whom you'll hear, is Margaret Markison. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, give us grace to set a good example to all among whom we live, to be just and true in all our dealings, to be strict and conscientious in discharge of every duty, pure and temperate in all enjoyment, gracious and generous and courteous towards all, so that the mind of Jesus Christ may be formed in us, and all may know that we are his disciples, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the word. I want to tell you a little bit about the story before we dive in. During the academic year, we move from the beginning of the Bible to the end, all the way from Genesis to the end of the Bible, so that you can see this great big book is really a lot of different books. That's what the Bible is. But it's one story. The whole Bible, we hope that you see as we move through the Bible this way, the whole Bible is one big story of God saving you. So lots of stories in the Bible, they all tell the same story that God desires to save you. We're going to start at the beginning with Genesis. This story is often called the creation story and the fall story. Uh, God had this great plan to create two people, and you'll see how that works out. This is a story that might be so familiar that you filled in some blanks that might not be quite true. So we know this story in many ways from art, from culture. So if I were to ask you what kind of fruit did the man and the woman eat, you would say an apple, and we would all be wrong. It's not an apple in the story, but it's apple in all of the artwork see? So I hope that you'll hear this story as if for the very first time. What we know for sure in this story is it teaches us what sin is. Sin, we learn from the man and the woman, is whenever we try to become God, whenever we try to know as much as God or be like God or pretend we're as powerful as God, that is sin. So we learn that story. We call this creation and fall. Uh, in the Lutheran faith, we consider this a falling upward, falling upward toward the grace of God that is always there for you. So let's hear this story. You have a couple of parts to read. You, if you have a voice that's lower, maybe male or maybe have a bad cold, if your voice is lower, today you can read the part of the serpent, and if your voice is higher, you can read the voice of the woman. So please join in this story. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and, the, and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat, of every, eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God say? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You 
So when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you may. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, let the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's imagine that it is your job to come up with a title for this story. It's your job to think of a title for the passage that you just heard. I wonder what you would call the story. You can share that later on. If it were up to me, I would adapt a title from one of my favorite children's books and call this story, God and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. (laughs) This was a bad day for God. You see, God's plan started out really simply in the beginning. God made heavens and God made earth. God made some water and a sky, light and dark, all according to God's very nicely knit together plan. And then God made some animals, and then there was a person, and that is when God's nicely knit plan began to fray along the edges. God made the person whom we call Adam or the man and instructed him to care for the animals and the garden. That was the plan, until God noticed that the man looked lonely. No animal was sufficient company. It is not good that the man should be alone, God observed, with a note of surprise in God's voice. So God revised the plan and created a partner for the man, and together the two fit like the first two pieces in an enormous puzzle. Together, these two people would care for the animals and the garden, all according to God's revised plan. And then one day, both the man and the woman were together when they met a serpent in the garden. The two people had been under strict instructions from God to avoid eating the fruit from that one particular tree. The plan, God said, was that if the man and the woman would eat that forbidden fruit, they would die. As you know, it took little convincing for the man and the woman to desire the one thing that was forbidden, yet they did not, in fact, die. What happened to God's plan? You've heard this said before that if you want to make God laugh, you do this. You make plans. If you want to make God laugh, you make plans. Maybe the first to get this was God. Early on in the beginning, God made this plan. 
for the man to tend to the animals in the garden. When that plan didn't work out, God improvised and added a partner to the plan. Together, those two humans messed up God's revised plan with an orderly garden and access to all the fruit but one kind. For God, things were not working out according to plan. Things were not working out according to plan. And that is exactly what life is like for anyone who has ever raised a teenager. (laughs) The plan doesn't always work out. Beloved teenagers, hearing this story of God and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day reminds me of parenting teenagers, the people who are in between in so many ways. In between being a kid and a grown-up, in between living along with someone else's plans and making their own plans. With small kids, parents and guardians can make any number of plans for them. Plans for the child to have fun, to go on play dates, to take part in any number of activities. Parents with little kids post these adorable social media posts, pictures, and um, about their planned play dates, and they share these hilarious things kids say at their planned activities. But these posts taper off as kids become teenagers. There are fewer adorable photos and fewer hilarious anecdotes, but not because teenagers are not fun and funny, because they are. But it's at this point, as teenagers inch closer toward adulthood, that they practice. They practice making their own plans. Plans that might look significantly different from the plans the parent has for them. Maybe the parent planned for the teenager to be a sports star, and that teenager is drawn to different activities. Maybe the parent planned for the teenager to have one set of friends, only to discover an entirely different set of friends in the child's life. Maybe the parent planned for perfect grades, and that teenager struggles in school. Maybe the parent planned for the teenager to have anything but that one kind of fruit in the garden. And the next thing you know, you make plans and God improvises. When beloved teenagers are moving through this in-between time in their lives, it can be tricky for the adults around them to know just how to accompany them. They're too old for cute social media posts. They're too young to be off on their own, and they are far too beloved to get lost in the garden, even when the plan gets revised. See, in the garden, God revised the original plan for creation. God changes God's mind a number of times in the Bible. But what does not change is God's commitment to the people. The late Old Testament scholar Terence Fretheim wrote that God is unchangeable with respect to the steadfastness of God's love and salvific will for all creatures. Yet God does change in the light of what happens in the interactions between God and the world. God does change in light of what happens in the interactions between God and the world. The moment the two humans consumed that forbidden fruit, what mattered most was not the original plan, but God's relationship with humankind. Can you see that? God updated the plan because the relationship mattered the most. This is vital for our beloved teenagers to know that there is no mistake that can undo God's love for them. How can we believe this? Let's go back to the garden. When God sent those two partners on their way because the original plan didn't work out, God did so tenderly. Later in chapter 3, God sewed garments. Sewed garments for the two people, clothing them in the promise that God and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day would not be the end of their relationship with God. There's no terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day that can end your relationship with God. No mistake too big, 
no doubt, too heavy. God has one plan for your life, and that is God's unchanging plan to save you. God will chase you everywhere and anywhere to save you. God didn't stay put in the garden, but God followed the humans all the way out of the garden and all the way to a cross in another garden of Gethsemane and all the way to another garden where Mary Magdalene would find a risen Christ destroying death's plan to have the last word and keeping God's plan to save you. Amen. I invite the assembly to rise as we sing together our hymn of the day. by hearing what God does for us in baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. 
united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Sponsors? Parents, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gifts of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture these persons in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and help her live in the new covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, it's your turn. And it's nice and easy, so if you don't have the, the hymnals open, I think you've got it. People of God, do you promise to support Cecilia Jean and pray for her and their new, her new life in Christ? Amen. Parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? In assembly, you can join us. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life, to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right. How? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Just in time. It's okay. Ready? Cecilia Jean, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here's that. All right. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons a new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Cecilia with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Cecilia, child of God, you've been healed by the, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. 
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. All right. Yes, now you just look at that light always. And you can light it on this um, day and talk about her baptism um, there. And she likes it. Can you, can you blow it out? There we go. All right, and so now you guys can be seated. Our congregation has a little song for her, too. You're welcome. Trusting God at work in us and among us, we raise our hearts and our voices in prayer for the needs of the world. For your work in the church, we give you thanks. Please nurture the faithful so that in listening, speaking, and acting, our hands may bear fruit for the sake of all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For your work in creation, we give thanks. Bring healing and restoration to all the earth and help us to be good stewards so that our hands work to lovingly care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your work among nations, we give thanks. Direct our national, state, and local leaders in paths of honest service that both their words and their actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. We pray especially for Diane Melby, Bruce Jessen, and Ron Van Dorn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For your work in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities, we give thanks. Guide our common life together so that children, youth, and adults of all ages flourish. Teach us to listen attentively to our neighbors, that we may consider those who may be left out or un underserved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For your work in this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless Cecilia Wool, who was baptized today, foster deeper connections among those who participate in service projects in Dickinson and around the country today. Strengthen our faith that we trust God is moving in and among us. Lord, in your mercy. For your work among those who came before us, we give thanks. We remember those who have died and are held forever in your loving hands. Hold us in your presence now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these in all our prayers, gracious God. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment to share signs of God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Be seated. Thank you. So cute. Oh, yeah. 
We continue our worship by worshiping God with our offering. invite the assembly to rise. Let us pray. Holy God, giver of all good things, receive the gifts we bring, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, that they may be used to your purposes for life and love in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The assembly may be seated. For those of you who are um, worshiping um, remotely, um, feel free to share communion with one another now. And if you don't have anyone to hear the words of promise from, hear them now. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. All are welcome at this table of the Lord. There is both gluten-free wafers and juice for those wanting or needing those elements. And children are welcome to commune or receive a blessing according to your family's practice. Please come, for this meal of grace is for you.
body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Yes, I can. The body of Christ given for you. this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Jesus, in this meal you have fed and nourished us to work in your beloved world. Send us now, filled with yourself and strengthened by your spirit, to live your love for others. Amen. All right, everyone. Um, if you did not sign up for God's Work, Our Hands project, which is starting shortly, we've got plenty of stuff, so feel free to stick around if you're able. And also, as you depart, whether it's off to your different projects or just off 
um, serving God in other ways. You're invited, if you would like, to um, look at or touch the water that is in the bowl in the back of the sanctuary as you depart um, there. And so we have a little um, celebration of our vocations, the blessing of our hands for ministry going alongside this, us being doing God's work with our hands. And so I invite you to rise for this. We are called to proclaim the good news. This good news is not left in some history long ago or a place far away. In us and through us, God is glorified in our work. When we offer a helping hand, God is praised. When we share our abundance, God is known in the world. In our service today and in our daily lives, let us live out what God has called us to in baptism. You are invited to make the sign of the cross on your own hand or on the hand of a neighbor. Boom. As a remembrance of that cross that Christ has put on our foreheads. And hear these words. God bless your hands and your work that through you God's love may be known. Amen. And receive this blessing. God who sets forth the law of love. Jesus who fulfills the law for you. And the spirit through whom you are called to love bless you this day that you may be God's hands and heart and voice at work in the world. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing our sending God's hands at work in the world. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.